Okay, we have, uh, maybe we, yes, there is a lady there. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kadra Hussein from Mo Radio. Mr. President, allow me to just ask a follow-up question on what uh, my colleague has asked. Um, you say that uh, you consulted from different political formation. From what we have as a people, the people who are on the streets, streets did not have T-shirts printed with political parties, you know, identification. Neither did they uh, carry banners that had colors of representation of a political party. So in your broad-based government, as you have said, you've consulted and you've also uh, had people from ODM working with you. Where is the interest of the people being featured in your broad-based government as they are the ones who prompted us to have this change that we are having right now? Now, to my question, um, I want us to just take, a, to take time back, you know, from the inception of the Kenya Kwanzaa government, when you took the oath of office, you promised to protect the constitution of Kenya and ensure that the justice system functions well, you protect the rule of law. Uh, when you were making your statement on Wednesday, if I'm not wrong, you told us about amendments of some few clauses of the constitution including Public Finance Management Act. You also talked about witness, uh, something to do with that. That is an act of, uh, in the Constitution of Kenya. But the populace has this question. Why would we talk about amendments? Why those very clauses that we have in the Constitution are not being respected? Like I'll give you an example, extrajudicial killings that we have seen not unless, you know, we can be given files of crime for the people who died. And then also on that, we had arbitrary arrests. We also have forced disappearances, not unless also the government can explain to the people where these people are, or maybe if you have the information on that. Also other things is that media rights and freedom from media censorship and also uh, being granted the opportunity to have the information needed to be given to the public. Also, another, another issue which I'll, I'll just say is on the commission and independent offices like KNCHR, that is the Kenya National Commission for Human Rights, which you can be publicly uh, held to account when you say it about uh, the numbers of people who died. And also we have IPOA, where they've been talking about frustrations in getting information that is necessary to prosecute some of the officers who had gone rogue during the protest. That is just an example I'm giving you about the Constitution. And also something else on leadership and integrity, whereby even one nominated person among those whom you've uh, nominated in your cabinet are, is actually facing graft case in the ESCC currently as we speak. And you talked about Singapore on uh, development. Just a reminder, Mr. President, that in Singapore, they have extreme serious penalties when it comes to matters corruption. Same as Indonesia, that just shows you how grave economic crimes are, especially matters corruption. So I want to ask you, Mr. President, you have told the Kenyans to give you timeline, actually to give you time to work on these issues, to set things right. If we are to hold you responsible today, Mr. President, what is the way forward from now on, seeing that there is the respect of the rule of law, the very constitution that you sought to protect, and also in the event that these timelines expire, the ones you've given us, six months, nine months, three months, 30 days, if they expire and we see no change, would you wait for the uh, youth to start pushing for you to, you know, out of government? And also, would you hit to the pressure that right now we are actually seeing 14 Kenyans have moved to the courts, courts actually asking for the ouster of you, Mr. President? Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about Thank that? Thank you very much. <laughs> the 14 Kenyans who have gone to court are exercising their democratic right. That is how free this country is. <laughs> that you can actually go to any court and demand uh, whatever you want in court. That is 
the taste of the freedom that I stand for in Kenya. And I want to promise you that those Kenyans who have gone to court for whatever reason, they are free to do it, and the courts are free to make whatever decision that is, const that is constitutional. You have asked me, I think, 10 questions. Let, let me try and answer uh, some of them. Number one, you have asked me, the people who went to the streets, they did not carry the color of any political party. That is correct. But remember, they carry the flag of Kenya. And that is why I'm saying, let us put the interest of the people of Kenya first. That is why I'm saying this broad-based government must be a government that must do, at the very least, three things. And I stated them in my address to the nation. Number one is the subject of integrity, which you have spoken very clearly about, dealing with the challenge of cor corruption. I have made very specific um, uh, uh, um, interventions. I have suggested very specific interventions on how to deal with the challenge of corruption. I have said we must change the Evidence Act so that it, corruption cases doesn't take five, ten years. That is what happens today, that we should be able to conclude corruption cases in six months. I, am, I will be making the proposal to Parliament. I hope Parliament agrees with me so that we can deal with the challenge and monster of corruption firmly and decisively. Number two, I have given my undertaking to the judiciary. In fact, I had an engagement with the Chief Justice a few days ago on my support, on my administration's support for the judiciary. It is demonstrable. When I came into office, I made sure that the judiciary has sufficient resources to be able to discharge their mandate, to be able to deal with corruption cases, to be able to deal with all the other cases. In fact, I am the president that has sworn in the highest number of judges in the shortest time in Kenya. <laughs> to facilitate the judiciary to be able to discharge their mandate. Because it is said, justice denied is justice. Justice delayed is justice denied. And you can ask from members of the judiciary my support for the judiciary. In fact, when I came into office, there were six judges that have been denied their right to be appointed. I appointed them the first day when I got into office to demonstrate my commitment to the judiciary. Let me also say the following, that on the subject of corruption, I am very clear in my mind, and I will mobilize resources that are available. I will mobilize every resource that is available to deal with the challenge of corruption. Number two, I also said this new administration must deal with the issue of making sure that we create jobs in Kenya by making sure that we don't import the things that we can manufacture in Kenya. Number three, I said this new administration I'm setting up must deal with the challenge of making sure that tax expenditure, we spend 400 billion shillings every year of taxpayers' money, paying companies, paying institutions, claiming tax refunds, claiming VAT refunds, in a process that is not thoroughly clear. And I have said that going forward, we have to deal with this problem. So I have laid out a clear roadmap on what the administration I've just appointed must achieve. I know you have said we must respect the Constitution, which we must. And I gave my undertaking to the country that there will be no disappearance of Kenyans. I gave that undertaking. There will be no Kenyans in Rivayala. 
there will be no Kenyans in, uh, in, in Tana River. There was a time we had 30-something bodies of Kenyans in rivers. That will never happen under my watch. And I have said this with clarity. If there is any Kenyan who has disappeared, I want people to step forward and say, Kenyan so-and-so has disappeared. I would be very happy to deal with it. Because under my, my administration, I have said there will be no disappearance of Kenyans again. There will be no extrajudicial killing of Kenyans. I have said that with clarity. And let me also say the following, that as we go forward, we must be truthful. When the Kenya National Human Rights stepped forward with fake news and said 200 Kenyans had been massacred in Gidurai, it was a flat lie. I mean, surely, I mean, a whole institution that is supposed to be self-respecting, paid for by the government of Kenya, how can they go and tell the country that 200 Kenyans had been killed, which was utter, you know, falsehood, you know? I hope that's not the organization you want to defend, you know? You cannot defend an organization that runs on fake news. And I will call them out, as Kenyans should call them out. We must stick to what is true. 42 Kenyans died, very unfortunately, in the events of the last one month. They shouldn't have died. Some of them in situations where the police were involved. Some of them in situations where criminals were involved. Some of them in different situations. All those situations are under investigations. And I have given undertaking that the government of Kenya will support those families even as we get to the bottom of what uh, happened in those uh, situations. I have also undertaken that there are Kenyans who unfortunately lost property. We are also going to support them because it was none of, n n nothing of their doing that occasioned all that happened to happen. Let me also say the following, that I am a great believer in the Constitution, and I will protect. I mean, <laughs> I mean, many countries that have gone through what Kenya have gone through, Bangladesh, for example, they switched off the Internet, they switched off the TVs, they did whatever they did. Kenya is running full steam. Internet is available every day. People are talking from all over the place. I mean, the newspapers are writing whatever they want. The TV has four screens. They are showing what's happening in Kondele, what's happening is you in where. <laughs> I mean, what further, what further freedom, surely, would you ask from me? You know, I have the machinery to switch them off. I did not switch them off. Because I am a believer in the rule of law. And I am a believer in free media. You know, that's why the media can go out and demonstrate and call me names and do whatever they want. It doesn't bother me. But um, that is what freedom is about. That's what democracy is about. So uh, I am very clear about uh, what Katra has said. All I, you have said that is really, that has really um, um, come to me is the young people who were out there did not have colors of parties or regions or, or communities. They had Kenyan flags. And that is why I am committed to making sure that the interests of Kenya, even as I appoint uh, the new administration, come first. What do we do about Kenya first? So that is uh, what I wish to say. Asante Sana. Yes, uh, my friend. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. My name is John Jacob Curio from KBC. I want us to set the tone of this conversation, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, when the Gen Z's came out of the streets, their demand was that you overhaul the entire cabinet, which you did. You have defended the reappointment of 10 cabinet secretaries back to your cabinet. The big question Kenyans are asking today is, is President William Ruto a listening president? That is a big question tonight. Is President William Ruto a listening president. 
Okay, I think there are too many media people asking. <laughs> so I, think, I think citizens want to ask this question. I think, just, let's just relax. I think the media have been asking me too many questions. Sasa raia nao wapate nafasi yao. Anyway, I am gojeni kidogo. Gojeni kidogo. Let me, let me answer him anyway. Because uh, Jacob has said something that is fundamental. Am I listening? Yes. How else would I have 12 of my cabinet secretaries out if I wasn't listening? More than half of my cabinet have left. It, it, is, it has never happened in Kenya. It has never happened in Kenya's history that more than half the cabinet has gone in one go. So I am listening. And I have said even the ladies and gentlemen that have come back to cabinet, they have come back to cabinet on new terms. We may have been friends. We may have been acquaintances. We may have, uh, but now this is different. You know, we are going to work on the timelines the people of Kenya have given us. And some of the good gentlemen that I have, and ladies that I have brought on board are people who have a proven track record. And many of them, Kenyans agree, have done a good job wherever they've been. 